right, welcome. Good morning. Buenos dias. Bon dia. Good morning. Habare sa osubahi. That's Swahili. I'm still learning that one. Aiboan, which is Sri Lankan, and Dobri Den. Czech. Still working on more languages. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. My name is Reverend Noel Anderson, and I'm filling in as the sabbatical pastor for Pastor Lynn Smiles Lopez for the next few months until the end of July. And uh, Pastor Lynn has, of course, been in contact with us. Do we lose? Oh, wait. here we go. We got a postcard from her all the way from Chaco Canyon. And this is a picture of the famous cliff dwellings of indigenous folk from that region uh, many years ago. And she said that she had an inspirational visit to Chaco Canyon and is sending blessings to the congregation. And she was also had a great stay in the monastery there. So um, we're kicking off today with our announcements. And of course, AUCC always has a lot of great things going on. So I want to uh, first... I want to invite Beth Poti up to tell us about what's happening with the climate strike. And you can use this mic right here, if that's OK. Good, good morning. Oh, OK. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so next Friday will be the climate strike. It's the first time in two years um, we'll be doing this. It's an international event. Um, we'll be starting at 11 o'clock at City Hall. If you want to march with myself and other folks with the Ainsworth banner, we're going to meet at on the sidewalk by Jefferson and Fourth, and I'll send all this out in an email. Um, Noel will help me with that. We're going to start at City Hall to hold our city council and mayor accountable for being climate change um, agents. And then we're going to do a couple stops, one at Northwest Natural and one at the Portland Business Alliance. And this is to really call to attention um, that fracked gas or natural gas um, is actually really not good for us. Uh, I have natural gas in my home. That's what we use to cook with. It's not good for our health. Um, and also the methane that's produced from natural gas is, one of, is a huge contributor to uh, climate change. So we're gonna do an action there. Um, go to the Portland Business Alliance because they have really been trying to undermine the Portland Clean Energy Fund, which is a fund specifically for BIPOC communities to help them um, kind of weather the changes around, around climate. Um, and Portland Business Alliance has been pushing back on that. So we're gonna do an action there and then we'll end up at Revolution Hall for a festival until eight o'clock. I know I've reached out to many of you. I know that your heart is there, but maybe you're just not ready to be in a crowd or walking is not um, an option for you or you have to work. So I'll send out some actions you can take online um, to push back against Northwest Natural and also OPB because OPB continues to run ads for fracked gas and fossil fuel companies. So there'll be a couple things you can do this week, but if you'd like to join me, I'll be at City Hall at 11 on Friday. Thank you. All right, 11, 11 on Friday. So that course is a very important part of the green team ministry. And we're so thankful for their leadership on this critical issue of our time. And we will be in more touch with more information. We are still looking for a point person or a, an organizer to help with the bring, get everybody from AUCC together to go down and be part of the parade for the Pride March on June 19th. So I know there's a lot of great organizers in this church. So just let us know and we'll make sure that you get the support needed to make that happen as well. Um, another announcement from a member in our congregation, Reverend Andrea Cano, she is helping lead along with Ecumenical Ministries of Oregon, uh, United for Peace in Ukraine prayer service. And that is going to be Tuesday, May 17th, 7 p.m. at Congregational Beth Israel on Flanders. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll also be hearing from the U.S. Senator Ron Wyden and Oregon Senator, State Senator Casey Jama there. So that will be an important event. 
to continue to pray for the peace. We're all watching the news and seeing how horrible things are happening right now in Ukraine, and we continue our prayers for all the refugees and for, all, and for peace in the region. So um, another important announcement is today after church, there will be a meeting about fellowship. So we will be getting a, a group of folk and really anybody who's invited, who's interested in helping with fellowship. We know how important fellowship is to our congregation and to what it means to be a faith community. So if you're interested in helping steer the direction and, the, the, and help be part of fellowship, please come and join. That will be Michael Hall after church. And um, today, we were now ready to begin worship, and we are going to be focus, focusing on how our faith community is welcoming, inclusive, supportive, and engaged around the issue of mental health issue. Now, that acronym we use in the UCC is WISE. So how can we be supportive to individuals and families living with mental health cha challenges, brain disorders, substance dis use disorders? And this is part of a broader network of congregations working towards this, this goal in our denomination. And I believe that the Ainsworth was actually the first congregation in the Central Pacific to vote to become a wise congregation. So you'll be hearing more about that today. So let's let our worship begin. Good morning, church family. I'm Jamie Setta, and there are three things that I would love for you to know about me. The first is my pronouns are she, her, and Aya. The second thing I would like you to know is that my allergies are kicking. It is not COVID. If you see me blowing my nose, have no fear, it's the allergies. And the third thing I would like you to know is that I am a person living with anxiety and depression, and I'm so grateful to have you all come together today online and in person for this Mental Health Sunday. Our land and labor acknowledgement. We sit on the ancestral homelands of the Moltena, Clathamath, Clackamas, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malala, Bands of the Chinook, and many others who made their homes along the Columbia River. We honor the members of over 400 tribal communities who live in the Portland metro area. We acknowledge the labor of kidnapped and enslaved Africans and of Chinese workers and Latinx farm workers who have risked so much and received so little. They have all helped to build the wealth of this country. Please take a moment to honor the people who continue to resist and survive despite the intentional and ongoing attempts to destroy them. In our call of worship today, I will be the leader that is not in bold, and y'all will be the people, and you're bolded in more ways than one. <laughs> yes, why don't we get on our feet and stand? Thank you for that reminder, if you're able, and if not, that's cool too. May all people see the love, care, and compassion that is God. God is our counselor and therapist. They help us heal and walk life with our siblings or ourselves living with mental health challenges. Hear, O oh God, our prayers of hope, reconciliation, and wellness, that we may feel your presence on our journey. God loves us through our blemishes, and we respond by grabbing on to hope. God is a holy counselor and journey partner that holds us up with a beacon of their immense love today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Join us for our opening hymn number two, Glory, Glory, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 
since I laid my burdens down, my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I, since I laid my burdens down, I feel better, I feel better, so much better, so much better. since I laid since my, I laid my, my burdens down. Burdens down. I feel better. I feel better. So much better. So much better. Since I laid. Since I laid my, my burdens down. Burdens down. I feel like shouting. I feel like shouting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I laid my. Since I laid my. My burdens down. Burdens down. All right. Well, it is a, a wonderful song, the gift of music. Thank you so much for that. We are laying our burdens down. Yeah. I think they do deserve another applause, right? So, um, I, it's been an honor to, to be part of Ainsworth so far. This is only my second week in person with you all. And so far, I'm getting to know a lot of you, and that has really be, been wonderful. And I also want to uh, offer thanks to the WISE team for leading the service today. And I'm happy to have a break from preaching already. So thank you for that. <laughs> But no, I mean, it, it will be a real testimony to the important work that WISE has been doing about uh, mental health issues and um, what it means to, to lay our burdens down before God and to work with how many of us, how do we support each other, right? With those in our community, those in our family, 
that are facing mental health issues. And so I'm really looking forward to the service today. But with that, let us be in a spirit of prayer for the community. God, who is our counselor, our comforter, who guides us along this journey. Thank you for this day in which we come together and worship and recognize the importance of the community issues we're facing of after this long pandemic, so many people need the help of the church, the need the help of the neighbor, and need the support of you, our God, as some have faced isolation and struggle, as many have missed those social interactions of school, our children have suffered. We pray and we lift all those up who have faced issues with mental health, with drug addiction, with the many trials that, of depression and anxiety. And we pray that, that we might also be a support for all of those folk. We see the ways in which mental health has brought violence to the community. And we're seeing again a rise in mass shootings from El Paso, Texas to Buffalo, New York. We mourn with those who have lost a life. We pray for an end to racism and injustice that brings forth this mass killing so often. We especially lift up those victims of Buffalo today in our prayers. And as we think about all of those people in our congregation who have struggled through the pandemic, who might still be at home and, and maybe have our immune compromise, we pray, we lift those people up. We lift up all of those who have, are struggling with illness and sickness. I know one request for Tom West, we pray for him. And we take this moment to lift up all of those who are struggling in our congregation, we, we, and, and throughout and beyond, and we lift those voices up now in our hearts. And as we continue to worship together, let our spirits rise and let us go out and find how we learn more together and do more work together. And let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Et orbe nada te spante, quien a Dios tiene nada, nada te turbe, nada te spante, solo Dios basta, nothing. 
Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten God alone. by our very own Kathleen Harmon. It is not easy to live life for anyone, but if you believe in a loving God, that he is always with you, knows all of what is going on with you, and you have trust in your heart, he will carry you through and grant you salvation with his tender mercies and grace. In trying times when you feel weak and vulnerable, you can be promised that he'll heal you as your faith grows. See all the kind ones that are with you. They are messengers for you, granting you promise for getting you to a better place. It could be in a stronger belief, a special person as your friend, a companion pet, or just something that eases your pain as another person's compassionate eyes look upon you, making you feel calm and that they're there to help you in some manner. It could be their soft, tender voice calling your name, or someone giving you a hug, and even their special words they say to you. And nature invites you into much healing as you enter the forest and marvel at the glory of all you see. Green trees, meadows, animals, a flowing stream, shelter in an old barn when the rain comes, listening to the birds sing and the crickets, and going to the ocean where there's calming peace all about the salty air, and listening to the tide and also the crashing tide waves hitting some high rocks. Life is meant to be loved and to love, to be kind, generous, and show empathy for others. But don't forget to love yourself. These are just a few of God's wondrous things. Jesus, he's so special, as in prayer, you can carry your burdens to him and he'll take them. Just believe and have trust in him. Yes, in trust, he will carry you over the sands, leaving just one set of footprints, carrying you to a better place. Believe in Jesus as he's the Son of God, born as our Savior, who saves us all the time. Amen. On this Mental Health Sunday, I'm thinking in particular about racially motivated violence and the victims, um, 10 or so who died on yesterday in Buffalo, all of them African-American. Um, and I was thinking about the very, the ways in which mental health impacts the urge to be violent, but also how it impacts us all in this community who are more fearful um, and the recognition that uh, the, the threat is ever present. Um, and so, uh, as I think about the song of His Eyes on the Sparrow, it is a, it's meant to be a balm, uh, kind of a soothing agent as we think about God is always with us. He's always watching. Um, and we're never alone. Why should I feel discouraged? Why 
should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion a constant friend is he his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. God's eye is on the sparrow, and I know He watches. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? And why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven? and home when Jesus is my portion a constant friend is he his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the space. And I know he watches me. Good morning. Good morning. And I would like some people to come join me this morning. As I read this story, well, I'm going to ask you some questions first. Yesterday. Yeah. Not yesterday, but I know, I remember you. So, I'm going to ask a question. What is one thing you like about yourself? One thing you like about yourself. Let's start with, you want to go first? Or? Um, yeah. Um, what, what do you like about yourself? Um, I like I'm really agile because I really like playing. That, that's it. That's it? OK. Aaron. Um, I like how if I, 
I like my hair. You like your hair. Great. <laughs> Jadia, what do you like about yourself? I like that everybody is different in their own way. Wow, that's very wise. What do you like? I like your dress. I like the polka dots. Do you like your ponytail, Francis? I like my little garter. Yeah. Very good. Hey. Oh, let me get down. What do you like about yourself? You like your eyes? You like your mouth? Okay, great. <laughs> so I'm going to read this story. It's called The Most Perfect You. And this is a book that's pretty new, just came out earlier this month, and we were able to have it. So uh, those of you who are watching on Zoom, you will see it. Those of you in the congregation, you see the back of my body. <laughs> so it's called The Most Perfect You by Jasmine Simon. Uh, the stars. Yeah, the stars. Stop yeah. Stop. yeah. So she writes. Ivory came down the stairs wearing her winter hat. The hair covered by the pink wool, the warm July sun streamed through the windows of her house. Mama, she said, would it be okay if I wear this hat today? And her mother said, you certainly can wear that hat today. But why do you want to wear that hat? Why does she want to wear that hat? And yeah, there's a cat right there. To hide her hair, you think? Well, let's see. I think you might have read this book before I read it. Okay. <laughs> Irie sat on the bottom step and stared at her shoes. Well, I hate my hair. It's too poofy. When other girls play, their hair bounces up and down. My hair doesn't do that. I want pretty hair like everyone else. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. And her mother said, but Irie, I didn't make you to be like everyone else. I made you to be you. You like your hair? Nice, yeah. When you were still in my belly, I had a conversation with God and shared everything I wanted in a child. What do you think she wanted in a child? I said that I wanted you to have my favorite color of skin, and then I was shown the most magnificent rainbow, the rainbow, and the shades all over. I looked in the colors and the person could be until I found the favorite one that I wanted your skin to be. I said that I wanted you to have spectacular hair. And then I was shown all the hair in the world. I looked at all the hair a person could have. 
until I found my favorite, your hair. That's all right. I said that I wanted you to have sparkling eyes. See the eyes, yeah. Sparkling eyes. Ooh. Okay. Oh, you want to watch yourself on the screen. But she said, I wanted you to have special eyes. Do you see your eyes? And the eyes that look like your eyes? Yeah. You think those are her eyes? Yeah. And then I was shown all the eyes in the world until I found my favorite eyes. Yeah. I said I wanted you to have a kissable nose and that I was shown all the noses in the world. I looked at all the different shapes and sizes of noses in the world until I found my favorite, your nose. Wow. Do you like your nose? Yeah. yeah. And I said I wanted you to have a joyous smile. And then I was shown all the smiles in the entire world. I looked at all the bright smiles until I found my favorite, your smile. These are all the different smiles that people have. Yeah. They're, they're all different. Yeah. I said that I wanted you to have other unique qualities too. And then I was shown all the freckles and dimples. I saw all the long legs and the short legs and big feet and little feet. Yeah, all the difference. Yeah. I heard all the precious giggles and stutter, all those extra things that make people unique. I picked my favorite of each. Yeah, she picked them because she wanted Irie to be very special. Finally, I said that I wanted you to have a big heart. But I didn't need to see anything. I simply asked that you be kind to others and kind to yourself. When you were finally born, I looked at you and you were everything that I had asked for. And as you grew, you were only the most perfect you, but you were kind too. She was just like her mother wanted her to be. So, yeah, this Irie, she still have her hat on. So her mother said, I am sorry if you don't like your hair, Irie. Your hair and all the parts that makes you, you, espe were especially chosen. You are all my favorite things. Irie ran to the nearest mirror, took off her hat, and stared at herself. She studied her reflection, taking in every inch until a smile stretched across her face. What do you see? Mama asked. I see my smooth skin. I see my beautiful crown of hair. I see my bright eyes. 
I see my awesome nose. I see my happy smile. I see the most perfect me. So I think Irie took off her winter hat and saw that she was perfect just the way she was. All right. Well, I'm going to invite you all to join Miss Nancy and I, and we're going to talk some more and do our craft about the most perfect you. So I invite you all to join, and we'll go forth from there. And the middle school and high school age will also meet at the library. Thank you, Reverend Cecil, for all you do for those little people. We really appreciate you. Today's scripture lesson is coming from Psalm 139, 7 through 8. Where could I run from your spirit? Where could I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in death, you're already there. I could fly away with wings made of dawn or make my home on the far side of the sea. But even there, your hand will guide me, your mighty hand holding me fast. If I say the darkness will hide me and night will be my only light, even darkness won't be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You created my inmost being and stitched me together in my mother's womb. For all these mysteries, I thank you. For the wonder of myself, for the wonder of your works, my soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you while I was being made in that secret place, knitted together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my body even there. All of my days were written in your book, all of them planned before even the first of them came to be. How precious your thoughts are to me, O oh God. How impossible to number them. I could no more count them than I could count the sand. You suppose I could? You would still be with me. Amen. So I am not Unhe. <laughs> um, she and I work on the WISE working group together, and uh, she called me, actually she emailed me last night and uh, said that her daughter had a high fever, and so if I would read um, her testimonial. So here it is. And I'm going to read it in the first person, even though I'm not her, because I just feel like it sounds better that way. One day, my daughter, Claire, asked me, Mom, do you think I'm too generous? I don't quite understand what you're asking. Is there anything that happened at school? What made you think like that? My daughter hesitated to answer it for a while, and finally, she told me a story from her school. My friend seemed like she was looking for a marker, and I wanted to share mine, but I felt I was not supposed to do it. I don't know why I felt that way, but I felt that way, and I was confused about why I felt that way. Do you think it is because I am too generous? I realized that it was going to be a long conversation. Listen, Claire, even though we live in the US now, mom and dad tried to follow some American manners. However, we're Koreans who eat Korean food for every meal. There is an interesting feature in Korean food that shows you who you are. Did you notice that all Korean foods are already cut into small pieces during the cooking process to make it easier to use chopsticks? We don't have any dishes that we have to cut ourselves with a knife at the table like steaks. In other words, cooks think in advance 
and consider the needs of those who eat them. Cut them into bite-sized pieces and serve them on the table. Not only food, but this is how Koreans live their lives together. Consider the needs of others in advance and provide for them even before they ask you. And we call it communalism. Western culture is a little different from ours. It's called individualism, and I think this culture takes boundaries very seriously. The things that communalism value can be judgmental and violate their boundaries in individualism. Instead, individualism values each one's voices and responds to them. Do you understand? I think I got it. That's great. Then what are you going to do when this happens again? Well, we live in America, so should I follow their way? But mom, I still want to be me. Then I should be an individualist at school and a commu communalist at home. It's so confusing. Yes, you are in a complex situation, but the idea that you still want to be who you are seems to be the most important thing. Then let's think about how you can be balanced between being yourself and not crossing borders with others. She seemed interested but still confused because she couldn't find an answer. Well, I found a strategy. If someone seems to need help, I ask them, I happen to watch you and you seem like you need help. Is there anything I can do for you? If they say something, I can go with them. I'm fine with that too if they say no to me. How do you think? Aha. That sounds like a good idea. Then Claire, Claire went and played like a child, as usual. Since I stepped into this country, I had to painfully learn the idea that I am not only different in this society, but also can't function as a valued adult due to my language barriers and cultural differences. I was ashamed of who I was in this society. A year ago, I told my daughter, I'm so sorry that I'm not a native English speaker. It would have been much easier for you to have an English speaking mom. My daughter answered to me that no mom, you are just a perfect mom for me. And I, oh, sorry, I'm getting emotional. And I realized the one who was ashamed of me was just myself. My daughter has loved this vulnerable mom and has been proud to build a stronger family together. Each of us is imperfect, but we are growing a perfect relationship by embracing and harmonizing with each other. Thank you for listening. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's see. Hope I brought my... I was riding a bus into downtown Portland and a group of young people, about five or six of them, got on, uh, filling some seats behind me. 
they weren't being overly obnoxious, just carrying on as teenagers tend to do. At the next stop, a trans woman, still in the process of transition, who appeared to be having a horrible day, boarded the bus. She avoided the stares of many of the riders, but briefly made eye contact with me before she sat down a few seats ahead of me. The teens behind me were making comments about her and, and mocking her just loud enough for everybody on the bus to hear. She was dressed like she had been to a job interview that didn't go well. Or maybe she just had a bad day at work. Her makeup probably looked terrific when she got up and when she left the house that morning, but not so much that afternoon. As I exited my seat and made my way to the front of the bus, I paused by her seat and said, excuse me, miss, but you are beautiful and I support you. I hope you have a good afternoon. She smiled and expressed gratitude. To my surprise, to my surprise, the group of young people got off the bus at the same stop I did. They were right behind me as we walked up the block and came to the intersection, waiting for the red light, the red walk sign to change to go. I was very nervous and I could feel my legs shaking, but I turned around and faced them. And I said, shame on you, shame on each and every one of you for, for making fun of that woman on the bus. How dare you be so mean to a woman who is just trying her best to get through the day and you're making it so much harder for her. She deserves your respect. Before parting ways, each one of the teens apologized for their behavior. As a person with a disability, as a person who's lived with a disability, physical disability since the age of 11 due to a traumatic brain injury, I understand what it's like to feel the stares of others, to be treated as incompetent, less than, invisible, or even presumed intoxicated based on outward appearances. But I also live with chronic fatigue and depression. Perhaps invisible signs of, in, of imperfection, which can lead to isolated moments of self-doubt. I know not to take any of the uh, stares or, or the, um, the put down to others personally, because I have faith in God. I have a faith community that helps me through these difficult times. I have medication to help with the depression. But what are those who don't have family, friends, faith community, or support networks to rely on? What happens to the mentally ill lady who literally has cockroaches on her clothes wherever she goes, but she doesn't seem to mind? Her neighbors in the residential hotel where she lives refer to her as the queen bee because her room is so infested with insects. Or her neighbor down the hall who uses fingernail polish as eyeshadow and makeup. He bedazzles himself, his shaved head with nail polish and glitter and walks the downtown neighborhoods by himself carrying on a conversation with no, as if somebody were walking beside him. He's often perceived as a threat or a nuisance by the general public, if they choose to see him at all. But to many who know him, Michael is a beautiful, intelligent, 
unique yet troubled individual who struggles with schizophrenia. If a person like Michael, bedazzled with glitter, nail polish, and, and body odor, or a woman like the Queen Bee, beloved children of God, were to walk into our church or into our lives today, how would they be received? I would like to believe we would do our best to welcome them into our community, to affirm their worth and dignity without judgment or condemnation. It's not always easy to love the Christ who's camouflaged in the imperfect humanity of the neighbor who screams out swear words or hurls insults at us as we, walk, as we pass by. But Christ is there. Mother Teresa said, when I look into the eyes of the dying, I see Christ. Can we say, when we look into the eyes of those with mental health challenges, which I dare say is all of us, to some extent, that we see Christ? Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your imperfect neighbor as your imperfect self. Do to others in their imperfections as we would have them do to us in our imperfections. Easier said than done, but it's what we're called to do. I didn't think I'd have to put my lipstick on, but I see everybody else took off their mask, so. <laughs> that was our secret, Berlin. <laughs> Good morning, church family. My name is Miriam Louise Robinson. Among other things, like a wife, a mother, a daughter, and a friend, I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I want to share with you a little bit about me and why I became a clinical social worker. I believed all my life that I wanted to be a healer with people. In elementary school, I wanted to be a teacher. In high school, I decided I wanted to be a nurse like my mom. Then I took chemistry. <laughs> and decided maybe there's another way to help people. So I decided in college that I would be a psychologist, and I took statistics yeah. twice. <laughs> I graduated during the Reagan era, so college, from college, so anything that had to do with the helping profession meant that I needed to either get a master's degree or start praying. I did both. I went to a clinical social work program, Smith College. It was a school of social work in Massachusetts. By the way, you were looking at 50% of the African American students who graduated in 1987. At school, I didn't understand why everyone on campus always quoted their therapist, or admitted they went to therapy, or missed their therapist understand why anyone would openly talk about such nonsense. 
Black folks don't talk like that. We pray, talk to our auntie, grandma, or pastor. Then I realized I'm in a clinical program to become a social worker and a therapist. If I'm going to talk the talk, I better walk the walk. I went to therapy. But it was more of an exercise. I, I didn't really need to talk to anyone. After all, I'm a trained clinician. I'm fine. Of course, life happened. In 1990, I moved from the East Coast to the Pacific Northwest. I became clinically depressed, grieving for my family, my colleagues, my sense of belonging and history. Four years later, I had my first child six weeks early. I had developed postpartum depression. I fantasized about hurting myself. I fantasized about hurting my child and doing everything I could so that no one knew. A year and a half later, I had my second child. I was terrified that it would happen again. Thank God it didn't. In 2008, I moved to North Carolina, where for seven years, I felt like I had found my people. In 2015, I moved back to Portland. For the next year and a half, I was physically ill and again clinically depressed. I felt like I had no hope. In 2016, my father died. He was suffering from multiple medical issues interrelated with his mental health. He was severely depressed. I begged him for a year before he died to get help. He refused until September of 2016. By then it was too late and he died two months later. Throughout all these events, all these events, I never sought therapy. Bear in mind, I'm a trained clinician of 35 years. I'm licensed in four states and treat people from ages 12 on up. I've done presentations on the importance of mental health and the right to seek care. Did I mention that through all of this, I never sought help? When my father was dying, as I look for my place, when my father was dying, I realized that I needed to process all the loss, anger, and inability to remain healthy. I struggled about who to see. I, I could not see anyone African American because I probably knew them or wanted to be their friend. That's because the community for clinicians of color is so small here. I interviewed a white woman. Her main qualification needed to be that she could hold my pain, the pain of a black woman who lives in the Pacific Northwest. She has. I found this quote by Steve Chapman in a blog. He writes, beautiful imperfection is about seeing flaws as an undeniable expression of what it means to be a human being. It is about regarding our own imperfections, not as a weakness, but as a unique gift that has the power to inspire others. Our messages today are about the beauty of imperfection. Through my pain, loss, and fears, I became a better clinician, better mother, wife, and friend. I can look back and be so grateful for my imperfections because it finally has taught me how to be what I have strived to be since I was a child, a healer. Thank you so much for your time and amen. amen. Thank you so much for your testimonies this morning. The fourth thing I would like all of you to know about me is that I love this church. I love y'all. Y'all are my church family, my community, and I'm extremely grateful 
that you hold me up and love me in my perfect imperfection. At Ainsworth, where I belong, you belong, we belong. Would the ushers please come forward to continue to bless and support this beloved, imperfect, perfect community. Soldiers plea not to let him die Better than a hallelujah sometimes We pour out our miseries God just hears a melody Beautiful the mess we are The honest cries of breaking hearts are better than a hallelujah. The woman holding on for life, the dying man giving up the fight, are better than a hallelujah sometimes. The tears of shame for what's been done The silence when the words won't come Are better than a hallelujah sometimes We pour out our miseries God just hears a melody Beautiful the mess we are The honest cries of breaking hearts are better than a hallelujah better than a church bell ringing better than a choir singing out singing out we pour out our miseries god just hears a melody beautiful the mess we are the honest cry Breaking hearts are better than a hallelujah. are better than a hallelujah. Better than a hallelujah sometimes. Better than a hallelujah. Better than a hallelujah sometimes. Hallelujah, 
Beautiful people, join me in the prayer of dedication. Oh God, we call out in prayer beyond our understanding, and especially in times of need. Our worship sends us forth in service, and we offer ourselves not as individuals alone, but as part of larger efforts and supported by our faith. We dedicate ourselves to the maintenance of healthy boundaries and to our own self-care, but also as instruments of blessing for others in need, particularly those who are affected by the challenges with mental health. Help us to remember our call and promise and to learn from the moments we falter or misstep that love may increase, that wellness may flourish, that healing may come. As we have always been, we are yours, poured out in love for the world. Amen. Oh, before our benediction, I would love it if you all welcome me and another applause for the amazing musicians. Thank you so much for the beautiful gift of music. And of course, to our speakers, what an amazing way in which we learn from them today. Powerful testimonies. Thank you so much. An incredible service as we together are learning as a church, as a community. What does it mean to be perfect in our imperfection? And so we are thankful for this service. Thank you for your testimonies, for your music. And it's such a beautiful thing to come together. Join me in this benediction. May the grace that says you are not alone encourage you. May the mercy that says you are enough comfort you. May the love that says you are loved embrace you this day and every day. Amen. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us, teach us as his brother each person to embrace. Be present, God, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted. And meant to love and live. Teach us, O oh God, your lessons as in our daily life. We struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for evil. To love them as we find them, or as they may become. Let your acceptance change just so that we may be moved in living 